guys. Um, the first thing that you need to understand is that uh, um, there are two ways by which uh, transmission can be made. One is the analog transmission, which is the continuous variation of voltage. And the other one is digital transmission, that is uh, a series of high and low pulses. So talking about <clears throat> any sort of transmission, as the signal is being transmitted through long distances, uh, two things would happen to it. One is that, of course, because of attenuation, because of loss of strength, the amplitude of the signal could decrease. And there would be different reasons in different situations. Like for instance, if you're sending a signal through copper wire, then some heat energy losses would be there inside the copper wire. And hence the power of the signal would reduce. If it's a, it's a light signal in optical fiber, then the, the light would be absorbed by the impurities in glass and hence the amplitude of the signal would decrease. But somehow, and even uh, if it's uh, any of these two types of signals, there would be some sort of electromagnetic radiations being emitted out of the transmission channel or cable. And because of that, the signal would keep on losing the strength. So as signal travels through long distances, the amplitude of the signal is supposed to decrease. This is called attenuation, loss of signal strength. And also some, due to external interference, also some unwanted random power would get added to the signal. So if you could see the signal is no more smooth and the signal is no more smooth after transmission, is because some unwanted power, random power, due to external interference gets added. It's more like if uh, the signal has been transmitted in the form of, uh, let's say, electrical signal in copper wire, then some high power cables in the surrounding region would interfere with that particular copper wire and would cause some random power to be added to that particular signal. And because of that, as the power is being added randomly, so, so that means the signal is not going to be any more smooth. So this is called addition of noise. So an unwanted random power called noise is going to be added to the signal. So in any case, if the signal is transmitted through long distances, two things would happen. One is attenuation, that is loss of signal strength. Second is unwanted a random power being added to the signal, which is called noise. So guys, we have a solution of one problem, which is the loss of signal strength. And that is using an amplifier, operational amplifier that we discussed in the last chapter, that will amplify the signal. So using an amplifier would amplify the signal. But as an amplifier would amplify the signal, it would amplify the signal as well as noise. So the noise, which is an unwanted power, would also keep on amplifying as it keep on amplifying the signal. So any transmission system, so any transmission system is made up of a series of transmission channels and amplifiers. So, so what's happening is that a signal is being transmitted through long distances and when signal loses power, and becomes really, really weak. So you put an amplifier to amplify the signal. So what an amplifier spits out is a more powerful signal. And then you transmit it through long distance again. And then once it loses strength, then you have another amplifier. So it's a series of transmission channels and amplifier and then transmission channel and an amplifier. And that's how deep sea cables work. So you would know that uh, there are too many deep sea cables which are transmitting distances through long, or transmit, which are transmitting signals through long distances. So they are made up of a series of wire, amplifier, wire, amplifier, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> but too many repeated amplifications would do what? That the signal would 
have too many unwanted random power being added to it. And that would make uh, our, I mean, after, after a series of amplification, that would make our signal to look uh, somewhat like this. Because of continuous addition of random powers, and and because of continuous repeated amplifications, these signals gonna end up looking like this. That means the noise becomes too heavy, and the signal might become unrecognizable in that noise. That's because of multiple amplifications and the noise kept on amplifying at every amplification and more noise kept on adding so the so after several amplifications the signal becomes unrecognizable and that is a problem so you have this limitation that you can only do as much of amplification till where the signal despite being not of very good quality but it should be recognizable. Once it is not recognizable, then there's no point. That creates a bit of a limitation as to how far away you can send the transmission. Because after several amplifications, the, so the noise becomes too heavy and the signal becomes unrecognizable. So guys, there's an alternate to that. Now, there's a bit of a mystery that how can you have an information which was continuous variation of voltage being transformed into uh, a digital transmission, which we have to discuss in a while. But just suppose that the transmission is now in the form of series of high and low pulses, high pulse, low pulse, high pulse, low pulse, low pulse, high pulse, and so on and so forth. So if transmission is in the form of series of high and low pulses, the same factor would happen to it as well. It will pick up noise and it will attenuate as well. But, but the system is made up of regenerators, which are more like operational amplifiers working in saturation modes. So when you have regenerators, what they actually do is that they set a certain minimum bar and they would recognize any information above that bar as a high signal and below that bar as a low signal. So the output regenerators over here would know only two outputs, either a high or a low. So every time, since it produces only two possible outputs, so it can eliminate the noise from the signal. So I'm repeating myself. Somehow, in digital transmission, instead of sending continuous variations of voltages, you send series of high and low pulses. So when you send series of high and low pulses, so the same thing would happen with these signals as well. They will attenuate and they will also pick up noise. But with these systems, the, the amplifiers are basically called regenerators, which would know only two outputs, high and low. So they set a certain minimum bar and anything below that minimum bar would be recognized as a low signal and anything above that bar would be recognized as high signal. So since they have only two possible outputs, either being high or low, so of course, that way, the noise would naturally be filtered out. So, so this way, when you do transmissions in the form of digital, every time you do repeat the amplification, the noise is gone. And since the noise is gone, so that will not create any sort of bound or limit onto you as to how many regenerators you can use because every time the signal would be as good as it was right in the beginning. So the question remains, and the question is that how an analog signal is converted into a, a series of high and low pulses. So that procedure is called analog to digital conversion.
in short form, it's ADC, an to digital converter. That's a circuit that's there in the transmission system. And so we have to see what an analog to digital converter would do. So an analog to digital converter would take samples of signal at regular intervals. What does that mean? That means it, it measures the value of voltage at zero milliseconds. Then it sees what is the value of voltage at one millisecond and then at two milliseconds and then three milliseconds and so on and so forth. So, so quite obviously, there's a bit of a disadvantage and that is that since samples are taken at regular intervals, then any information between that would be completely lost. So you'd only know what's the voltage at zero, what's the voltage at one. So that's a bit of a compromise you have to make. But what you do is that instead of taking continuous variation voltages, you take samples at regular intervals. And then when you, once you take samples at regular intervals, then you convert them into series of binary codes. And the series of binary codes are in the form of bits. And the minimum number of bits you have is four. And we need to understand four bit systems, but there are higher number of bit systems. There are eight bit systems, which would be able to send more information. There are 16 bit systems, which can send even more information, 32 bits and so on and so forth, 64, it's 128 bits. But the most basic of them is a four bit system. So what that does is that <clears throat> it, it creates, it changes every voltage value into four bits of information. So since you have four bits and four bits are being assigned four different values. And this is, Two to the power zero, which is equal to one. Two to the power one, which is equal to two. Two to the power two, which is equal to four. And two to the power three, which is equal to eight. So these are the values assigned to each bit. Which is why this bit on the right side is called LSB, least significant bit. Because its value is the smallest an error in this bit would cause a less significant error to your information. And this one's called MSB, most significant bit. That's because the error in this bit is going to cause most significant error in your information. But you would see, <clears throat> since each bit has value, <clears throat> and these each individual bit values are being summed up, so you can, you can, you can make any value up to a maximum of 15 volts by making any bit as high or any bit as low. So it's like, if I have these four bits and I want to send an information of one volt, so I keep this as high and all these as lows. So that means, one zero 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 would be equal to because this has a value of one, so it'll give us one volt. So a series of high and three low would give us one. If I have to make two, so I keep this as high and the rest of them as low, so that I'll make it zero zero one zero. If I want three, so I can make so some of these two values which is two plus one, that's equal to three. So it's one, one, zero, zero. So you would notice that up to a maximum of 15, you can create any voltage value by, and you have to do that by using a bit of a trial and error <clears throat> to identify which bits are to be high and which bits are to be low to create any value voltage. So as I said, at regular time intervals, you take, samples of voltages 
and then convert them into binary codes and those binary codes are being transmitted as series of pulses of high and low. So if you could see a three is zero zero one one, so that means two low and two high pulses are going to be sent. Five is zero one zero one, so that means a low, high, low, high will be sent. Eight is one triple zero, so a high followed by three low pulses will be sent and so on and so forth. So as I was telling you previously that an information is being sent a series of high and low pulses. So, so this is how an analog transmission or an, an analog signal is being converted into a digital signal. So every information becomes a bunch of four pulses which are being sent and transmitted. So in a transmission system, you have two extra circuits. On the transmission side, you have ADC, which stands for Analog to Digital Converter. And then on the receiving end, you have to convert it back into something similar to this. And that would be called DAC, Digital to Analog Converter. So guys, in digital to analog conversion, what actually happens is, I have already told you that we have lost the information between zero and one, one and two, two and three. So we only know what's the value voltage at zero, what's the voltage at one, what's the voltage at two, and so on and so forth. So you'd have, if you might link it with the previous set of values. So, so you have initial was zero, and then at one, it was three. So you don't have any information between zero and one. So it stays zero and jumps to one, then stays one, and then it jumps to five, and then stays five, then it jumps to eight, and then stays eight, and then it comes down to four, then stays four, and so on and so forth. So that creates a series of continuous variation of voltages. But I would want you to compare this information in DAC to ADC and you need to identify that that was the original signal and that has converted into this particular form. So quite obviously, uh, this is quite different from the original one. So the signal has become a bit grainy here as well. But the best advantage of it is that it will stay this way after irrespective of how many amplifications you do, because the noise will keep on getting removed. That would not have been the, so if you want to do long, long distance transmissions, then this is the best way to do your transmission rather than sending it in the analog form. So when, when a signal arrives in this form, into the DAC, digital to analog converter. So it recognizes it as 0011 and would convert into three volts and create a three volt voltage level at that point. And then after receiving another signal, it will create a five volt voltage level at that point. And that is the function of DAC. And that's how your signal is converted. After receiving, you convert it back into something similar to the analog variation. Now guys, you need to understand that, uh, well, this is something we did talk about that, this is how the information is, but, and this has become grainy, this is not as smooth as the original signal was, but while saying so, you also have to keep an eye on the horizontal axis, which is in milliseconds. So very, very short interval of time. So if you would, at a normal time level, this would seem pretty continuous because these two points are very, very close to each other. As this is only one millisecond, one thousandth second of a time. But yes, you can improve it furthermore. How can you improve it furthermore? You can improve it furthermore by taking smaller intervals, smaller intervals of time, or smaller intervals of voltages. So, yeah, examiner can ask you that, how can you get an even smoother variation? 
So you can get even smoother variation if you take shorter sampling time. That means you increase sampling frequency or reduce the step width. So these are called steps. So if you reduce the step width, that means the points on the horizontal axis would come even closer to each other. So you can increase, you can reduce the step width, or you can increase the sampling frequency, and that will make your output signal less grainy. Now, for that, I want you to understand one more thing, and that is that, as I said, that you can increase the sampling frequency. There is a rule that's called rule of thickness. It says that there is a bare minimum sampling frequency you should take, which is what? The sampling frequency should be at least twice the highest frequency component of the signal. For instance, if let's say you assume that this is the signal that we want to send. So you could see here the frequency is a bit low, then here the frequency is a bit high. Then whatever is the highest frequency component you expect for any signal to contain, your sampling frequency should be at least twice that highest frequency. So all along the signal, wherever you spot the highest frequency, then to have a good recognizable signal, your sampling frequency should be at least twice the highest frequency. That's called rule of thickness. And there's a logic behind that. So if you look at this very, very closely, you get to identify that if you keep the frequency same as the highest frequency, then you'd probably take one sample here, you'd probably take one sample here, and you'll miss out the peak. But if you take twice the highest frequency, then you would include both the dips and the peak as well. So at least twice the highest frequency component would ensure that every variation would be included in your samples. And the next thing is that, just I said that increase the sampling frequency, the other thing you can do is, just like we reduce the step width, and this is actually in relation to the question you asked in Chama, you can reduce the step height as well, that is, the points are right now one unit apart on the vertical axis. So you've rounded everything off to the nearest integer. But you can reduce the step height and you can take the voltage values to the nearest one tenth of a voltage as well. But that would mean that you have to send an information which is in decimal. So let's say you have to send 4.2. So what you do is that instead of sending each information as four bits, you send each information as eight bits. One set of four bits would send the whole number part and the other four bits would send the decimal part. And that's how you can send the um, more detailed signal in terms of decimals as well so so two ways you can make the variation smoother one is by reducing the step width and the other one is by reducing the step height now uh, this is something that we need to understand that any transmission system has an analog input then it will have an analog to digital converter and then there's another component that we haven't talked about. That is parallel to series converter. You know, in ADC, it would spit out a series of pulses. Like right? every information would contain four bits of information. So when these four bits of information are being sent, then they need to be sent through four channel cables. That means each pulse would be sent through each cable. That is a lot of cost. When you're talking about sending the information through 
hundreds or thousands of kilometers. So what you can do is that instead of sending each bit of information through different channels, you have a parallel to series converter. What parallel to series converter does is that when it receives four bits, instead of sending the four bits simultaneously, it holds and sends each pulse one by one. So it sends one pulse, then it sends the second pulse, then it sends the third pulse, then it sends the fourth pulse. And that's why there's a timer attached to it, which will, which will ensure that the pulses are being sent, sent after regular intervals. And that way they can be sent through a single channel cable. And once received on the other side, after receiving each four bits of information, it will send those four bits of information to a DAC as four bits together, which will convert that into an analog output. And that will be sent as an output to the output system. So guys, apart from that, you need to sort of recognize some certain advantages of digital transmission as well. The circuits used over here are cheaper the cost of transmission they're naturally cheaper i mean the circuits that you need to build over here they're going to be less expensive for digital transmissions as well compared to the ones which are required continuous variation voltages to be monitored and reduce cost of transmission because you know <clears throat> when you were sending information as a as a continuous variation. So, so you need to put the amplifiers more close together. Over here, since you just have to have a low being recognizable from high, so you can put these repeating generating stations more further apart. And since you can keep these more further apart, so that means the cost of transmission will reduce because every regenerating station would have its own cost. So Digital transmission has another advantage in terms of transmission, and that is that you have need of lesser repeating stations. It has better quality. We've already talked about that because we can filter out noise from these transmissions. And guys, this is more of something that you need to remember, but you, you should know that with digital transmissions, you have this option of sending a particular algorithm of a parity bit where you can choose that we will send bits in certain algorithm and if it is not in that particular algorithm form so that means there's an error in information so the system has this capability of recognizing an error if it doesn't have bits receiving in that particular algorithm so you can send let's say four bits of information and then you can send one parity bit which will be according to a particular set algorithm and if that particular set algorithm fails then it would be identified that there is some sort of error in transmission